Uh, thanks for attending again. So let me just uh, recall where we stopped yesterday. Uh, we were working on uh, a smooth complex manifold uh, variety X uh, with L on pool. And we have defined this uh, beta invariant. Uh, so we, first we have defined this uh, space MDiv of divisorial measures uh, is a set of measures of the form uh, some AI and uh, direct mass at a divisorial valuation. And uh, this is a convex finite sum. And for a measure in MD, we have to find this uh, beta invariant, uh, beta of mu, which was the uh, integral of the log discrepancy on xn uh, against our measure, plus this uh, derivative of the norm of the measure, we call this beta L, derivative of zero of uh, mu in the direction of the x. Or this uh, norm was a sort of uh, Legend transform, so the norm of mu L was the uh, premium over continuous functions in xn of uh, the volume of phi against the integral by this mu. Um, and so we had to find. Uh, divisorial stability to mean that uh, this invariant is going to be coercive respect to this norm on the set of divisorial measures. Divisorially stable if only if beta of nu greater than epsilon norm of nu for all uh, nu is div. And uh, equivalently, we can also uh, define this as uh, the non negativity of the or the positivity of the divisorial stability threshold, which is kind of like this uh, delta invariant that we had before. Uh, sigma dl, which is the infimum over all uh, non trivial divisorial measures of. Uh, beta of mu over the norm of mu. And so the theorem that I stated, and I'm going to today finally define what the second part of this theorem is, uh, was that uh, this notion of stability is equal to uniform case stability for filtrations. So Johnson. XL is divisorially stable. Is equal to uh, XL uniformly, uniformly stable or filtrations. Um, before we go uh, into this uh, notion, uh, let me also state a theorem that uh, generalizes the result of Liu that we saw yesterday for uh, relative stability. This is also some uh, Johnson. Uh, so he says that the function which to L maps this divisorial stability threshold, which uh, detects uniform, uh, well, divisorial stability. Uh, is actually a continuous function of the ample cone. So the uh, divisorial stability threshold is uh, continuous. Yes, of course. Um, and so uh, it is uh, greater zero. than zero, yeah. Continuous uh, on the ample cone. 
which apparently means that uh, divisorial stability and hence uh, uniform case stability for filtrations are both uh, open conditions as well. Or uh, divisorial stability. or filtrations uh, or is uh, open conditions. Uh, so again, I won't really be able to prove this in finite time, but um, let me just say the biggest ingredient of the this result is a holder estimate uh, for the uh, this differential uh, in L. So let me just uh, for notation. We need to denote this uh, as the gradient of uh, the norm in the direction of kx dvt equals zero norm u uh, L plus dkx. We need to denote this by the gradient and uh, the direction of kx of norm going to be uh, slightly easier to uh, state these folder estimates in this notation. Uh, yeah, so then they prove uh, the local folder estimates. First, I'm going to pick uh, any norm on the ample con. Uh, so it's a subcon of a thin dimensional vector space. So they're all equivalent. Uh, I just pick any norm on x, then I fix L, and uh, if uh, L prime minus L is small enough, uh, there exists, well, there exists dimensional constants alpha n, c n, so that's for all measures in M div. And the gradients of the norm of mu with respect to L minus the gradient of the norm of mu with respect to uh, L prime is smaller than Cn times the norm 22 uh, to the power of alpha. We have these uh, local holder estimates, and then we just uh, get continuity. Uh, of uh, this in particular. And we also get kind of folder estimates for uh, this norm as well. And because the log discrepancy part doesn't really move, it's relatively, it's not immediate, but it's relatively simple to derive a uh, holder estimate for uh, this visual stability threshold as well. Uh, so local holder estimates and hence uh, continuity. So uh, it works very well in this uh, openness sense. It's a very nice notion of stability. And now we're going to look into uh, how it's actually related to uh, other notions of case stability. So one uh, thing uh, is that if uh, I pick, say, a uh, valuation, which is dreamy as uh, yesterday, uh, so it is divisorial and uh, I think generated, uh, then the beta invariant of nu, uh, so B nu, I suppose, uh, corresponds to roughly the Dawson Pataki invariant of the associated test configuration. Uh, so you can see this computation, for example, in the paper of Rui and Edwin. Also, Fujita. Um, 
And uh, so to uh, gener generalize this Dawson stack invariant, we're going to go through uh, the beta invariant. And uh, the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to define the beta invariant of the filtration uh, through uh, the beta invariant of a measure associated to the filtration. Um, so the way that we did this was using the Mojang pair operator for uh, more general this configuration, and so we're going to try to extend the motion operator to uh, filtrations as well. So in particular, uh, in this case, it's exactly the beta invariant of the motion operator of uh, the filtration new. Um, okay, so to do this, uh, we need to extend the motion operator to this class of abstract filtrations. And we're going to do this by continuity. And to do this by continuity, we need to introduce a notion of uh, distance or a metric on the space of filtrations. So uh, let me recall something that Yushiel mentioned, uh, that there is a correspondence between filtrations and norms. Uh, the correspondence between Filtrations, the section ring, and uh, sequences of north no median norms, in a sense, uh, on graded pieces of the section ring sequences. North median norms. So if I have a filtration, I can define a norm. Uh, on the mth graded piece on Rm as uh, exponential minus of the supremum of the uh, lambda such that S belongs to F lambda Rm. This is a uh, North median norm on uh, Rm with respect to the trivial absolute value. Uh, so this means that uh, lambda uh, S M equals the trivial uh, norm, which is uh, one on C star uh, times the norm of S. And uh, again, the triangle inequality is strengthened to the uh, ultrametric inequality S plus S prime. M is more than the maximum. S prime M. And conversely, if I have a norm, I can associate a like, norm like this. I can associate the filtration uh, at lambda or M as a set of uh, S in R M such that uh, the norm of S is more than E minus lambda. It's kind of uh, vector space version of the fact that uh, filtrations and uh, that uh, valuations and absolute values are in correspondence on fields. And we want to define a distance. Uh, so we're going to pick two filtrations, uh, F prime two filtrations. of the section ring. And so we're going to define an object which is kind of a, a difference between the two filtrations. Uh, so we define the difference uh, f minus f prime. So this is purely formal, uh, there is no group structure or anything on this space. Uh, they behaves uh, kind of like subtraction in a sense. Um, where on the graded piece, uh, F minus F prime, uh, lambda Rm is the set of S in Rm. We're going to kind of uh, interpolate this uh, correspondence here. So we're going to get the S such that S M, where uh, this norm corresponds to this filtration degree M. 
is more than e minus lambda yes, I mean, prime, uh, where this is more corresponding to this filtration. And uh, essentially, because this is just an equality, uh, this is not going to be a vector space or subspace in general. So we have to take this fun as well. Um, so uh, for example, we have this trivial filtration, which uh, contains absolutely no information at all, uh, which is a triv lambda rm is simply rm for uh, lambda uh, square down or equal to zero and zero for lambda positive. Uh, so it's extremely uninteresting. And it, it, with respect to this uh, difference separation, yeah, it's kind of like a, a zero. So that then uh, so f minus f equals the trivial filtration. It's fairly easy to see uh, if you just take the same norms here. Uh, yeah. And f minus f uh, triv is also just uh, f, which you can see uh, by using this description here. It's the uh, trivial filtration, the associated norm uh, here is just going to be uh, equal to one it works, that's zero. And so we exactly uh, get F again. And so now we have a filtration uh, which kind of contains the information of how uh, both filtrations deviate from each other. And we can uh, then look at its limit measure in the sense of yesterday. Uh, not really, but it is not a symmetric operation. Uh, but the, that's not really a, an operation. So it just has this kind of zero. Like this is purely formal. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, if you want, you can define minus f as f3, minus f3, uh, f, yeah, yeah. It's just very easy to work out using these uh, norm correspondences if you're interested. Mm. Right. Uh, so, again, from yesterday, uh, we had uh, a limit measure associated to any filtration. And we call uh, so, uh, the relative limit measure. prime uh, is the limit measure in the sense of yesterday. So this uh, limit of uh, direct masses then called the uh, jumping numbers in the sense of the limit measure of particular uh, where you cover we need to measure from yesterday uh, by uh, sigma of f plus sigma of f three. And uh, the point now is that, uh, let me state this. this uh, yeah, well, let me change this as a definition. But uh, the first absolute moment of this measure, so the first absolute. Moments of 
the uh, relative limit measure defines a pseudo metric on the space of test configurations and so on the space of uh, filtrations as well. Defines a pseudo metric on or the space of filtrations and also on our space of this configurations, which are included in them. And we call it uh, D1, because it bears uh, much similarity with the D1 distance in the sense of Darvash from the complex words. D1 F prime equals uh, the integral the against the uh, measure prime. Uh, so it's a pseudo metric in the sense that there can be two uh, filtrations that are in the same but are at distance zero. Uh, and that is what we call uh, equivalence of filtrations. We say F uh, is equal to F prime. F um, D is F prime uh, plus zero. And this uh, turns out to refine this notion of equivalence of test configurations uh, in the birational sense that we had yesterday. Uh, so it refines equivalence of test configurations if x L x prime or prime are equivalent in the sense that we had uh, yesterday done. In fact, it's an if and only if, uh, then their filtrations are also equivalent. And as we saw, the Mojon pair operator doesn't see equivalence. So we're going to usually work uh, with the Mojon pair operator on filtrations uh, up to this. Uh, equivalence relation. So now I can state a few more facts. Um, the first one is uh, not very useful for his talk, but it's nice to know if you ever try to read the papers. Um, is that this space uh, F R, the space of filtrations, mod equivalence? Uh, it is not complete, uh, but it admits completion. This is not really a fact, just works, but uh, we, we call it the space of finite energy metrics. The completion E1, the space of finite energy metrics. The space that, of functions that has a lot of uh, nice compactness properties we can do. Uh, very, and it's very strong analytic tools in it. And in fact, this uh, holder estimates uh, were proven by passing through this completion. And it's really the same, uh, at least metaphorically, as the space of finite energy metrics in complex geometry in the line bundle. Uh, more interestingly, um, the set of uh, equivalences of test configurations uh is dense uh in this set with respect to the u1 distance it is u1 dense in filtrations mods equivalence so basically you can see this as a uh, metric way of uh, stating the fujita approximation theorem so you have a non finitely generated filtration and then you can approximate it by uh finitely integrated filtrations, which are test configurations. And by kind of spectral analysis, you can show that this uh, is actually a D1 approximation. Um, a third fact is that uh, the Mongean pair operator is D1 continuous also. So the Mongean pair operator, uh, which was defined on Tz, and 
it doesn't see equivalence. So it really matter. Uh, is the one continuous? Which means that we can uh, then just purely formally extend it by continuity to the space of filtrations. Sorry, at this point, I, I, I guess not, but um, yeah, I'm willing to avoid pre potential theory, I suppose, so we uh, can say, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Um, squeak on. And it's continuing. Yeah, to um, E1, but also just R. Right, so we, there uh, we use pure intersection theory and then we use this metric description to just extend it. Yes. No, it doesn't. Uh, oh, yeah, on test corrections, yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah, I mean, technically, you, you kind of have to pass to this E1 uh, to prove this stuff. But um, yeah, uh, uh, I'm just stating this as a fact, which uh, means I, I don't really want to get into the dirty details. But yes, yes, you have to. So it's actually. Yes, yes. Uh, which. Is also the point of the measure point of view because you don't need uh, continuity of envelopes to that, for example. Um, and uh, last fact is that uh, so this uh, norm that we had defined, uh, so this function which do uh, L plus. Normal view L, uh, it's obviously possible to define it on any measure. And the differentiability, differentiability segment also extends to uh, measures in the image of this module per operator. This is, is also C1 on, on X uh, for mu in the image of. Oh, let me call this module pair of operations. Uh, which basically allows us to uh, extend all of the ingredients in the beta invariant to uh, this set of operations. So we can define uh, so let's mu, uh, sorry, let f be a filtration. We define the beta invariants of f to be uh, the beta invariants of the motion parameter. And as you can guess, we're going to define uh, caseability for filtrations to uh, the coercivity of this. Uh, knowing that this beta invariant coincides with the Dalton Pitaki invariant in the case of best configurations. So we can also wonder about these divisorial uh, measures. Uh, and in fact, um, this is a proposition. Uh, so the image of the. This definition stability is the same as the uniform case stability for filtrations is no definition. No. No, because the divisorial measures uh, are not are strictly contained in the measures of separator, which is my uh, next theorem actually. Um so MA of uh R strictly Uh, 
Uh, like even for example, if you look at uh, real test configuration, then the measure associated to it is going to be quasi monomial and not divisorial. So whenever you have real things, you're completely leaving divisorial relations. Um, uh, the image of the motion operator on filtrations contains MDiv. And in fact, there is an isomorphism between MDiv and uh, a set of so called divisorial filtrations, which I'm going to define. Uh, again, we mod by rescaling, but we, we don't really need to have these technical details. Uh, where a divisorial filtration is a filtration of the form form so at lambda on an m graded piece is a set of uh, s in R m. And uh, as in the case of visorial measures, I'm going to pick a finite number of divisorial valuations and a finite number of constants, uh, which you can make convex or not by normalization. Uh, the mean of over i of mu i s yes, and i is greater than lambda with mu i uh, finite selection of uh, divisorial operations and the CI are some real constants. And uh, yeah, so of course, uh, I mean, not all filtrations are of this type, nor even up to equivalence. Um, so let me just re recap a little bit. So we have this whole zoo of, uh, of classes, which can be a bit confusing. Um, recap. Uh, of the classes of filtrations we've seen, so we have uh, this class, oh, I guess, dreamy filtrations, which are the ones induced by uh, dreamy evaluations. As we've seen, they were contained in uh, the set of test configurations, uh, which was a set of set valued finitely iterated filtrations. Uh, this was contained. Uh, Again, by this module pair operator in uh, FDIV. And finally, we have a very large class of all possible operations. And uh, testing the beta invariants against each of these is going to give a different notion of stability. So, testing beta against these we get uh, so this is going to be uniform case stability for filtrations so this is going to be divisorial stability This is going to be uniform case stability and this. And the first class is going to yield uh, validity stability we talked about yesterday. And so, um, although uh, these are all uh, strict inclusions in general, uh, we have, as we've stated, some equivalences. Let me get some 
colors. Um, so this uh, Buxom Jonsson result that I mentioned say that uh, these are equivalent, in fact. And uh, conjecturally, uh, this should also uh, be true. Um, right, so let me, I guess, properly define uh, in some case ability. Or, well, I guess, I guess it's clear. Um, well, we're going to define uh, the case stability thresholds. is uh, the same as before, but uh, we test against this quantity uh, rated filtrations. So uh, uh, in over Pz minus the trivial configuration, beta L nu, ma plus, uh, S and uh, uniform caseability, uh, it's like the caseability or filtration thresholds. Is uh, my KF, it's the optimum. Or F in uh, R. I guess. Uh, beta L M A S. Okay, and so the point of this result is that uh, this threshold is the same as the uh, divisorial stability threshold, uh, which follows from. The following results here um Um, let me call this the, I guess, the small version of uh, entropy approximation. Janssen again. Which notation did I choose? We got. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, so if I. Uh, it says that basically if I have uh, a filtration F in my space of uh, largest possible space of all filtrations, then there exists a sequence. There exists a sequence uh, F. M of divisorial filtrations, which uh, converge to it in d one distance, so that that's fine. Uh, that's this density result, and uh, they also converge in uh, entropy, or even just in terms of the beta invariant, uh, beta of M A of F. Uh, converges to um, converges to beta of ma. Uh, so this is true, uh, and it says that basically this uh, infimum uh, in the threshold can be computed equivalently on divisorial uh, filtrations, and so uh, it implies that sigma div equals uh, sigma. K 
the uh, big conjecture, which uh, I guess if you can prove it, you've solved the entire field, is uh, a more subtle version of this. So uh, the following conjecture. Uh, uh, which implies uh, that uh, case stability is going to case stability for filtrations. And uh, I suppose the Yotian uh, Donaldson conjecture as well. The conjecture. So it is uh, the same uh, same properties that we want, except the approximation is uh, from uh, test configurations to divisorial measures. Uh, or divisorial filtrations. Uh, so I guess entropy approximation. Uh, if that is in uh, div, there exists a sequence um, in these are so best configurations with, again, the D1 part is not uh, difficult, it's just these density results. And uh, this is beta parts. That is extremely tricky. All right, so uh, it's so basically the last results or the last conjecture, I guess, I have to say. So the, the reason why this is tractable is that in a sense, we can uh, restrict to checking this approximation on uh, semi-stable or SNC models, SNC test configurations, where we have kind of a dual complex, which is a, a sort of polyhedral complex of these zero evaluations. And it's relatively easy to construct filtrations that are divisorial uh, that approximate a given uh, f. But the problem uh, is that it's very difficult to check that they're uh, actually induced by test configurations. So the issue is that uh, it comes from the defects between these two spaces. But uh, if you have a divisorial filtration, you don't, you have no really reasonable way to check whether it is actually included in this dense space or not. And uh, yeah, and uh, all these entropy results uh, require yeah, these computations on the dual complex, and uh, that's this abstract divisorial approximation is the best thing we can do uh, for now. Uh, I think I'll stop here actually. So. So in the sequence of inclusions, um, yes. One of them that's sorry, in um, the fact that the uh, uh, is that uh, the expense in the in the next one? Or? Uh, every every uh, at least the last uh, two inclusions were done. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the problem with this uh, the fact that the small and the small and the small and the a more part, or? No, it's the, it's the entropy part, really. It's, uh, I mean, you want to uh, you want to show, for example, the A part of this beta invariant implies that uh, Ax B against uh, Ma of M or just to uh, with both Ax Yes, I mean, if F. Uh, so that, 
that's why I was saying, right, that this entropy is very difficult, like this log discrepancy is very difficult to understand and work with. And uh, as much as we can avoid it, uh, it's great. And uh, these convergence results, uh, we have no idea for well, uh, these configurations. Yes. Uh, it's not easier. Uh, I mean, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The first part is usually given for free. Like, uh, it's, it's, but uh, yeah, I guess if your question is, are there examples of this with all this? I don't think so. Be lots of examples for yeah. to uh, measure something invariant, but not. Oh, yeah, there's a ton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any update on other experts on that entropy approximation is true? 50 50. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that has been reduced to this really algebraic statement. I mean, you, you can also test this against uh, big test configurations, and it's roughly the same uh, from this work of Chile, and, uh, and it's reduced to an intersection theoretic approximation problem, basically, which, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 